The reason why the police response is never swift is because cops don't have to be swift. They can get away with it. There's no accountability. Okay, here, let's, uh, let's get back to what unites us all. Shitting on cops, because uh, once again, Americans are coming to the realization that maybe cops aren't really good at their jobs. Hello, we've been there already. We already knew that. Uh, they have fat budgets, and uh, all they do is, uh, with those fat budgets, buy themselves new toys and new methods of harassing the working poor and also other marginalized communities, black and brown communities, you know, as an occupying force that is completely, uh, like, they, they just completely removed from the theoretical reason for why they need to exist which is to protect and serve the interests of the people right the citizens except they protect and serve the interests of capital and uh, in a moment where they actually are supposed to be the hero that they claim they are all the goddamn time whenever they want to justify why they had to murder like an unarmed black teenager uh oh well turns out they're not the hero not only that but also they fucking lied a lot because they were desperately trying to craft a narrative that made them look good in this situation where 19 fucking children died, okay? 19 children, three adults, died in Uvalde at Robb Elementary School, and they are so incredibly desperately trying to make themselves look good while also trying to whip up the narrative that is like the best for the NRA in any particular moment. So I'm going to go over all the inconsistencies, but before I do that, I am going to uh, let you listen to the cops themselves. Efforts were made to try and break through that door. You say it was locked. What efforts were the officers making to try and break through either that door or another door to get inside that classroom? None at that time. The, the on-scene commander at the time believed that it had transitioned from an active shooter to a barricaded subject. Sir, you have people who are alive, children who are calling 911 saying, please send the police. They are alive in that classroom. There are lives that are at risk. Hey, That's not we're, protocol, we're, well, is we're, it? We're well aware of that. Right, yeah. but I, why was this decision made not to go in and rescue these children? Again, you know, the on-scene commander considered a barricaded subject and that there was time and there were no ch more children at risk. Obviously, obvi obviously, you know, based upon the information we have, there were children in that classroom that were at risk and it was, in fact, still an active shooter situation and not a barricaded subject. So there was 19 officers in there. In fact, there was plenty of officers to do whatever needed to be done, with one exception, is that the, the incident commander inside believed they needed more equipment and more officers to do a tactical breach at that point. That's why BORTAC was requested on the scene as soon as they were there. They executed a search, or at least a, a dynamic entry, and went in, and uh, of course, that was not until 12, that was not until 1257. Hey, 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 with the benefit of, hey, with the benefit of hindsight, hey, the benefit of, hey, stand by, stand by, hey. Dude, look at this shit, okay? That's what you get. This is the most understandable reaction. This is the most understandable reaction. Children died. 19 cops are waiting outside that fucking room, waiting for a fucking key to enter. That's the latest evidence that came out. Remember, first, it was two cops shot at the guy after, uh, and, and he shot back for 12 fucking minutes, okay? There was a shootout outside the school for 12 minutes, you know, striking some of the officers. Then we found out that he didn't even have a fucking bulletproof vest on, the shooter. Then we found out that the two officers weren't even shot that uh, badly, like they were just shot at. They didn't have any serious injuries. They were just like scuffed knees. Then we found out there weren't two fucking officers there. There was just a, there was just a, 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 a um, like the school officer, what is it called? The fucking resource officer. Uh, that was there, okay? Then we found out he wasn't there either, apparently. They just lied. They lied for the past two days as they tried to, they have tried to massage the narrative as best as they can. And this is the best thing that they could come up with. And it's gonna get worse. Knowing what I know about how cops operate, it's gonna get worse, boys. Get fucking buckle up. Get ready. What we are going to find out, if we ever do, I mean, there was a lot of fucking phone camera footage from the scene, so there will probably be more information that comes out. There will be more. Stand by. Hey, stand by, right? I got it. I got, I got it. Okay. Hey, from the from the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, the, of course it was not the right decision. It was a wrong decision. Period. There's no no excuse for that. But again, I wasn't there. But I'm just telling you, from what we know. Oops, my bad, brother. 
we believe there should have been an entry at that as soon as you can. Hey, when there's an active shooter, the, the rules change. It's no longer, okay, it's no longer a barricaded stuff. We don't have time. You don't worry about outer perimeters. And by the way, Texas embraces active shooter training, active shooter certification, and that, that dog, that dog, why the fuck would anyone get active shooter training from your fucking hot dog skin potato sack fat fucking cops that literally failed to do the fucking active shooting drills that they're going to teach others? Why in the ever loving fuck would anybody be like, oh yeah, I can't wait to give the police department more money so they can teach me active shooter training. Oh, we encourage active shooter training, dude. It's like, that's what the, okay, that's what would ha what was happening, dude. Even the fucking conservatives are like, nah, no, no, that's, this is too much. This is too much. Even conservatives are like, nope, nope, not it. This is not it. There's fucking cops on, like, ex-cops that literally do propaganda for the boot on a daily basis, turning around and being like, yeah, no, this is uh, unacceptable. You're right. That doctrine requires officers. We don't care what agency you're from. You don't have to have a leader on the scene. Every officer lines up, stacks up, goes and finds where those rounds are being fired at and keeps shooting until the subject is dead, period. <laughs> Seven words that will forever, forever haunt the community of Evaldi, Texas. Of course, it was the wrong decision. Of course, it was the wrong decision. That from Corporal Stephen McGraw, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, right there in a 40 plus minute news conference in which he- Bro, they should have said like, hey dude, if you want to fucking, if you wanted to, if you wanted to apprehend the shooter, you should have talked about CRT. You know, these kindergartners were learning about CRT from a queer teacher or something. Maybe that would have fucking got them to do the right thing in the moment. You know what I mean? Oh fuck, holy shit. Look alive, boys. We got real dangerous uh, things happening, okay? To his credit, laid out the haunting timeline of what happened at the Robb Elementary School. Uh, he said the shooter went in. He said that police followed him in soon after. There were 911 calls, including from young children inside the classroom, saying there were- That's the worst fucking, like, that's the most disgusting thing, by the way. They literally said, okay, we're gonna go through all of the bits and pieces of his, uh, of his, his, like, all the bits and pieces of, like, what he talked about, okay? But it is fucking disgusting that they literally said, oh yeah, we thought that they were, at a certain point they were like, we thought that there was no one there. We thought that the kids were all dead already. That's really interesting because that, that contradicts, uh, you know, uh, the, the timeline of the 9-11 calls. Student calls to 911 uh, at 10, at 12.03, uh, one of the students whispered she's in room 112. 12.10 said multiple dead. 12.13 called again. 12.16 says eight to nine students are alive. 1219, student calls room from room 111. 1221, three shots heard on the call. 1236, another, another 911 call. 1243, asks for police. 1247, asks for police. They left them in there and they fucking knew. They left them in there and they fucking knew that they were there, okay? It's a really good timeline that's super detailed. Timeline explained by Texas police. 1127, exterior door popped, propped open by teacher. 1128, shooter crashes car in a ditch. Teacher runs into her room to grab a phone, goes back out the door to call 911. 1128, two males at funeral home approach shooter after crash. They get shot at. One of them fell. 1130, 911 call from teacher. There's a crash and a man with a gun. 1131, shooter reaches last row of vehicles in the school parking lot. 1131, shooter begins to shoot at the school windows. Several cop cars arrive at the crash car site. Confirms resource officer for the school was not on campus at this time. Stated that he heard the call and drove to the school. Was under one minutes away and drives right by the shooter at the same time as the shooter is firing into school windows. 11.32, uh, 11 more shots fired at the school. At least 100 rounds have been fired at the school from outside. 11.33... Three cops enter the school through the front door. 11.35. Three cops enter the school from the front door. Four more cops follow them. Seven total. Two cops received grazing wounds through the closed classroom door. Okay. On. That's the two cops that uh, received uh, grazing wounds. I guess the, the timeline was like jumbled up. 11.37, more rounds fired, not specified who's shooting. 11.38, more rounds fired, not specified who's shooting. 11.40, more rounds fired. 11.44, more rounds fired. 11.51, more officers arrive. 12.03, 
More officers arrive and go into the school. There are now 19 officers in the hallway outside of the classroom. 1203, child in the classroom calls 911. Call lasts 1 minute and 22 seconds. 1210, child calls back to 911, tells them that multiple people are dead in her classroom. 1213, child calls back to 911. 1215, Bortak arrives. 1216, child calls back to 911, says there are 8 to 9 students alive in her classroom. At this point, like the uh, Bortak arriving is at almost approximately one hour later. Not one hour later, but like 40 minutes later at this point. Cops are already inside at this point. Child calls back to 911, says there are eight to nine students alive. Different child calls into 911, hangs up when another student tells her to. 1221. Child calls back to 911. You can hear the shots in the background of the call. 1221. Shooter shoots again and is believed to be at the door of the classroom. Cops move down the hallway towards it. 1236. Child calls back to 911. Operator asks her to stay on the call and stay quiet. 1243. Child on with 911. Asks the operator to please send in the police now. 1246. Child on 911 says she can hear the police next door. 1247. Child on 911. Asks the operator to please send in the police now again. 1250. Breached the door with the keys from the janitor as they couldn't breach them themselves as they were locked. 1250. The shooter is killed. The shooter had brought 58 total magazines with, a, with 1,657 rounds that he had purchased. However, there's conflicting testimony on that as well because Border Patrol agents arrived far earlier than disclosed, but the Uvalde police initially kept them from entering the school, two officials said. There are different political uh interests playing a role in the way that this is being covered right now so it's hard to to figure out or parse through exactly what the reality uh, exactly what the what happened officials described harrowing series of 9-11 calls uh including some of the children from rob elementary 78 minutes elapsed before police believing there were no kids at risk finally confronted the gunman officials say in Uvalde, Texas, some of the worst fears about the police response to the school shooting rampage were confirmed on Friday when state law enforcement officials acknowledged that more than an hour lapsed after the shooting began as the police waited to enter the classroom where the students were trapped inside. In an emotional and at times tense news conference, Stephen C. McGraw, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, gave the most detailed accounting of the shooting yet, diverging in substantial points from the original timeline given by officials. Most of the time, the gunman was at the school, Mr. McGraw explained. He was inside the classrooms where nearly all the killing took place, while as many as 19 police officers waited outside in the school hallway. I just want to point out that 19 police officers could not apprehend this dude, and they had to wait for a key. Meanwhile, you know, 19 children were being slaughtered. So it would have been far preferable if the 19 cops died instead of the 19 children. I think uh, that's not, you know, a, a ridiculous thing to say in this circumstance. Like, that is their job. Their job is to literally put them put their lives on the line to save children. Okay? Straight up. <sighs> what map of how close they are? Yeah, no, the Uvalde Police Department is, like, very close, yes, uh, to, the, to the elementary school. Other than the fact that 19 fully armed and equipped police were too afraid to take on one team with an AR-15 show that we should ban AR-15 and similar weapons? I mean, it shows me a lot of things. But a world in which, like, fucking, for example, firefighters, instead of fucking going into a fire and, like, saving lives, were busy, you know, sitting outside, their phones out, Snapchatting, would be unacceptable. You'd be like, that's crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, firefighters being like, nah, sorry, dude. Sorry, too big of a fire for me. I think we're just gonna, we're just gonna dial it back on this one. Not worth it, I think. Well, and we'll just make a perimeter. Firefighters make perimeters as well. They literally... Uh, uh, don't allow people to go into the fire. That is a thing that firefighters do. Can you imagine in that situation, like firefighters being like, shit, dude, we just don't have a key. We just can't, we can't breach. Sorry, we just can't do it. Oops. Liz Wheeler, this is a Republican, dude. Absent father, mother addicted to drugs, sent him to live with grandmother, loner, isolated by lockdowns, aggressive, fights in school, self-harm, violent video games, unrestricted internet access, no friends, just online chats, no church, broken families are the problem, not guns. I mean, dude, don't show me, like, broken humans like this, okay? It's going to be a lib take by me, but there are definitely circumstances where firefighters don't put themselves in danger to rescue people from a burning building. Yeah, also remember that, like, that is a natural disaster, as close as a natural disaster you can get, versus uh, this is not. You're dealing with a human being, and in the overwhelming majority 
of circumstances, they are still 1000% putting their body in harm's way all the time, nonstop. It's out of the question. It, it's not even a thing. Like what you're describing is when there's so, there's a lack of structural integrity and it's completely done. Like the, the building is impossible to fucking go into. You're, you're describing a, a, a totally different circumstance where no one is surviving that because they've already been asphyxiated. Like there's no, there's no oxygen in there. And also the structure is slated to fucking fall. Making a comparison in that circumstance to like 19 fucking cops failing to apprehend one fucking teenager with an AR-15 is a psychotic one. I mean, I, I, maybe you haven't really thought about a, a fire. I don't know. My dad's a firefighter. He's done crazy things just to save a cat, let alone a baby. Yeah. I'm a middle school teacher in an urban area where we have this year alone. We had at least one gun brought in and discharged in my building. I agree with the vast majority of takes, but you have to understand two issues that I think you are understandably not looking at both sides of teachers versus parents. We need cops outside preventing parents from coming in or they may also get shot. Reveal student locations. Yeah, I wouldn't have had a problem with the fucking cops actually, uh, you know, uh, not letting parents in. Like I said, firefighters also establish perimeter uh, all the time to stop, you know, further people from dying in that situation. But the only reason why I have an issue with the cops stopping the teacher, I mean, stopping the parents is because they themselves were not putting their fucking bodies on the line. Do you understand? If they did a better job and if they were like, hey, we actually have this handled, don't worry. And, uh, you know, parents didn't have to fucking listen to their children get slaughtered by some fucking freak inside with gunshots over the course of a fucking hour. Then there, that, there, this would be an entirely different uh, conversation to have. Look at how many cops would play Curious Homes and AR-15s that are holding up the parents but didn't go into the building. I mean, dude, this is it. Like, you can't fucking, you can't turn back from this, dude. You can't look at a fucking tased parent on the ground with other parents being apprehended and be like, yeah, man, this was, you know, this is the appropriate thing that they did, I think, in this circumstance. Like, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, establishing a perimeter is understandable, but, like, if you're not fucking throwing your life on the line, if you're not throwing bodies at the problem, quite literally, and the only bodies that you're throwing at the problem are the bodies of fucking little children and teachers, then... You know, you're fucked. A firefighter is thought to always prioritize themselves over victims because a fire is completely different from a psycho with a gun. But every time a firefighter enters a building, he puts his life at risk. They do that a lot, by the way. I used to be a firefighter. So if firefighters put their lives at risk constantly, why can't cops do it just once? Especially when it's 100 to 1 firefighters work in pairs, police work in gangs. Just absolutely correct across the board. Cops did exactly what they were told to do and just said, oopsies, made the wrong choice. Sadly, great example of the police system being inherently broken. I agree with you. Um, new accounts from CNN. It was an honor to meet 11-year-old Mia, who survived the Rob Elementary School shooting in Uvalde by smearing her friend's blood all over her and playing dead. Here's my CNN exclusive reporting. Dude, look at that. Look at what the fuck they're doing. Like, look at what kids had to do, dude. Um, are firefighters paid in the United States because I'm a voluntary firefighter in Austria and rule one is to put our lives at risk? Um, firefighters can be paid or volunteer, depending on, like, the locality. Um, uh, but in, in most big cities, there are paid positions. I agree. We had 200 parents show up during a lockdown and we needed to have cops keeping them from storming our school and admin. But in this scenario, they certainly seem to have more than needed and did not handle it with the appropriate care concern. You know that the teacher who propped the door open will face more consequences than these cops ever will? Dude, that is the most insane part of this. Like, like that person is completely blameless, dude. What the fuck do you mean? Oh, they left the prop door open and now they're going to be used as the scapegoat? Because the cops couldn't do their fucking jobs? Because the, the government can't do its fucking job. They can't actually push for adequate legislation to, to you know, uh, dial back the, the uh, guns that are in heavily, uh, heavily circulated, easily trafficked guns that are so, so easy to fucking acquire in this country. There were kids alive. There were shots being fired. The local school district police chief was outside the door. He determined it was no longer an active duty situation. He did not order his men to break through the door. Of course, it was the wrong decision. Corporal McGraw going on to say. It was yeah, remember, they were like, oopsie, we thought the kids were dead already. Just remember that. When they were making fucking constant 911 calls in secrecy while trying to hide their voices, while trying to not show the shooter where they are, they were trying desperately. The cops did not hear their cries for help the cops did not hear the 911 calls i said they're probably dead so you know not an active duty situation anymore it was the wrong decision period there's no excuse for that
CNN Shimon Prokopes live on the scene for us. Shimon, we have for a couple of days uh, wanted the truth, wanted the facts, wanted the specific timeline. We just got it, and it is damning, it is haunting, and for 21 families, it is devastating. It is very devastating. And now you know why the police were hesitating and why they were sort of giving us the runaround, because now we have the facts, and they're not good. Uh, they're not good for the police here. They're not good for anyone, law enforcement. Uh, the dis Bro, this is like, yo, people... I mean, this is this is a little bit of a sea change, I think. This is an attitude shift that I'm noticing. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, you got Tucker Carlson fucking shitting on the cops in this circumstance. You got 19 fucking dead kids. You got 19 dead babies, dude. I mean, these guys, and you have 19 cops outside of that door not doing shit. I don't know. Among pundits, yeah. And yeah, no, even in the media bubble. Because, like, listen, these dudes love uh, sucking the boot, okay? These dudes love... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Listen, I don't want to be that guy, but I can't imagine this would have played out the same way if the school were a predominantly white slash affluent neighborhood. What an interesting take from you, my friend. It did actually happen at Sandy Hook, which was a predominantly white and affluent neighborhood. Don't worry. Police uh, incompetence is a universal factor in this, okay? But this one wasn't even as bad as, uh, I mean, uh, in this circumstance, they were worse than at, at Sandy Hook. But don't worry. Parkland. Remember Parkland? Parkland is a fucking relatively wealthy, uh, well-off neighborhood. Yeah, white and affluent neighborhood. What did the fucking school resource officer do, bro? He shit his fucking diapers. Because when you're a school resource officer in the state of Florida, your sole purpose is to fucking brutalize black teenagers, okay? Shove their fucking faces into the hot concrete as you arrest them for being tardy or whatever the fuck, okay? That's the only time. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what, that's your job. The place was full of the good guys with guns that supposedly would have prevented Sandy Hook, but that farce the rest. Yeah. Decision to not go inside that classroom was a... For the record, just I want you to... I want you to understand, dude. Dude, I want you to understand something. The reason why the police response is never swift is because cops don't have to be swift. They can get away with murder in the wrong places, and they can get away with not doing the murder in the place where they're expected to. The, the, only main, the main point in that is that they can get away with it. There's no accountability because there is an attitude that cops are actually fucking throwing their bodies at the problem in instances like Uvalde. Because people genuinely believe by way of uh, media portrayal, because the media absolutely plays a significant role in like defending cops, no matter how fucking incompetent they are, local news especially, Okay. People have this attitude that cops are literally fucking rushing to, to take down shooters and, and throwing their bodies at the problem. Not to take away from the situation or look ahead too doomly, but this man is going to set an awful precedent for cops to jump in. Jump to when they're too quick to kill someone in the future as well. Completely predictable and broken system. Exactly. There's the other side of that too. Now cops are going to be even fucking more brutal and be like, well, what? You wanted us to be fucking brutal. You wanted us to be brutal. You wanted us to be swift. Here, we're being swift. And they're going to continue murdering the wrong people over and over again. I'm pretty sure there's a legal precedent that states uh, that they are not required to act, not required to help, not legally liable if they choose to do nothing. Oh, of course. No, I know. There was, a, I believe, a 2005 Supreme Court decision that dictated that cops don't actually have to fucking... Uh, they're not legally liable and are legally required to act in a situation that puts their life at risk, Okay. Uh, and then even, yeah, here it is, 2005, June 28th, 2005. Justices rule that the police do not have a constitutional duty to protect someone. The decision with an opinion by Justice Anthony Scalia, rest in piss, you piece of shit, and dissents from Justice John Paul Stevens and Ruth Bader Ginsburg overturned a ruling by federal appeals court in Colorado. The appeals court had permitted a lawsuit to proceed against the Colorado town Castle Rock for the failure of the police to respond to a woman's pleas for help after her estranged husband violated a protective order by kidnapping their three young daughters, whom he eventually killed. For hours on the night of June 22, 1999, Jessica Gonzalez tried to get the Castle Rock police to find and arrest their estranged husband, Simon Gonzalez, who was under a court order to stay 100 yards away from the house. He had taken the children, ages 7, 9, and 10, as they played outside, and he later called his wife to tell her that he had the girls at an amusement park in Denver. Ms. Gonzalez conveyed the information to the police, but they failed to act before Mr. Gonzalez arrived at the police station hours later, firing a gun with the bodies of the girls in the back of his truck. The police killed him at the scene. The theory of the lawsuit 
Ms. Gonzalez filed in the federal district court in Denver was that Colorado law had given her an enforceable right to protection by instructing the police on the court order that you shall arrest or issue a warrant for the arrest of a violator. She argued that the order gave her a property interest within the meaning of the 14th Amendment's due process guarantee, which prohibits the deprivation of property without due process. The district court and a panel in the United States Court of Appeals for the 10th Circuit dismissed the suit, but the full appeals court reinstated it and the town appealed. The Supreme Court's precedents made the appellate ruling a challenging one for Ms. Gonzalez and her lawyers to sustain. They don't protect property? No, dude, that's not... No, they don't protect women, okay? that It's not... They're trying to fucking... Cops are notoriously bad at, at enforcing temporary restraining orders. If you've ever gotten a temporary restraining order, if you've ever gotten, like, a sea of fucking death threats and had to at least, like, go talk to the cops about it to a degree where you have to talk to the cops about it, they will straight up tell you, well, we can do a temporary restraining order, but one, you will be informing the other person... Uh, we will be informing the other person that you're, you know, uh, getting a temporary restraining order against them, and in most circumstances, they can actually agitate them further and two a lot of people falsely assume that a temporary restraining order actually means like there's a physical barrier there is no physical barrier this person can still come over it's just a way to basically document it for the court cases in the inevitable fucking murder that happens to you just remember that as well i mean this is a very real conversation that i've had with a fucking los angeles police department detective i'm not fucking pulling this shit out of my ass they straight up when i went and, and had a conversation with the police like many many years ago you know, when, when I first started getting death threats and it wasn't like the fucking norm for me, I was like, holy shit. And my manager was like freaking the fuck out. And it was like, you have to go talk to the cops right now. They basically told me to buy a gun and also defend myself if something uh, were to happen. Okay. calls.